This film is part of an instructional series on fishing. With the help of some of America's greatest anglers, we will share with you several effective new fishing techniques, as well as methods proven by the test of time. guys welcome back thanks for watching another show um today this afternoon we had a trip this morning this afternoon we are actually going to the south skyway fishing pier we've kind of started doing something since we're down here local now when we have a trip the following morning we know we're going to need a lot of dead bait instead of uh instead of running around in the mornings trying to get it we've been going to the pier and catching our bait from on top of the pier so I know you guys enjoy, well, I know you watch. I don't know if you enjoy the bait videos, but you watch them. So I know you guys watch the bait videos and we're always catching bait out of the boat. So today we're gonna be catching it off the pier for a trip tomorrow. We got our cooler with us, a bunch of ice. So we're gonna try to fill it. What I'm really looking for is, uh, what I really want for tomorrow is I want thread fins. And, uh, and don't think that all dead bait is created equal either. Something we find a lot is that greenbacks live better than thread fins and sardines. No doubt about it, in the live well, greenbacks live better. But for dead bait, I guess the I guess the thread fins and the sardines are probably oilier, more oily, oilier. What is that, Jake? More oily or oilier? I'm not sure. <laughs> we both failed English. Um, <laughs> So there's more, I think there's more oils in the thread fins and sardines than there is in the greenbacks. And they actually, to me, seem to work better as dead bait than the greenbacks. And you know, dead bait's dead bait. I'll use greenbacks if I can't get anything else, but we're gonna go out of the bridge. I'm gonna show you how we look for bait on the bridge. And, um, and we're also gonna use some sabiki rigs to maybe locate some of the bigger thread fins and stuff like that. And, uh, make sure we're throwing on the bait we want so hang out let me pay this toll to get on the bridge or actually the road toll has anybody else been on the bridge lately the bridge price is crazy i went out there a couple nights ago with both my boys my wife and my daughter i know i'm kind of going off but the uh man it cost us 22 dollars to get on the bridge to the actual fishing pier that seems crazy. I mean, I'm sure there's a reason for it, maintenance on the bridge and stuff like that, but $22 for one car full of people, and I'm sitting there counting cars, and I'm like, man, I'm in the wrong business. I need to buy a bridge. Appreciate it, buddy. All right, man. I need to buy a bridge, but uh, <laughs> anyways, so we just paid the toll. We're fixing to pay to get on the bridge and uh, see if we can get bait for tomorrow morning. That way I can stay dry in the morning and we can just go straight to fishing. So let's go. Hit this go back, 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 back. guys so we made it onto the bridge and uh we haven't been coming out very far there's been plenty of bait i mean there, there's the bait's loaded right here but what i'm going to do first before i throw the net is i'm going to take the sabiki rig and i'm going to kind of sample the bait actually the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to look over and figure out where my poles are because i want to stay in the middle of those the best i can in between them so i got one here and i got one down here uh, like I said, there's time. Well, I don't see them now. There's some over there. But um, we're gonna sample the bait and see if it's uh, if it's what we're looking for. And like I said, what I really like to have is sardines and big uh, big thread fins if I can get them. 
Here we go. Here we go. Let's see what we got. What we got. Oh, that's money right there, guys. That is exactly what I'm looking for for my trip tomorrow. And I got a hook in my hand. So actually, the best way to handle a sabiki rig, which I didn't do there, is to grab the weight, and then you can control the line. Keep it straight, control the line. So, but that is, uh, that's exactly what we're looking for. Right there, that's a big thread fin herring. You see the thread, and look at that poor fella, man. Maybe that's where I hooked him. But uh, that's what we want, guys. So, we may see if we can hit him with the net here in just a second. We'll put this guy in the cooler. in the back of my truck. Jake, don't show everybody the back mm -hmm. of my truck, man. It's terrible. It is not good, so. Oh, uh, let's see. I like to see them a little bit thicker, but that's definitely the right kind right there. Oh, there's a good line of them right there. Pitch out into the current. And that's the other thing, guys. I know I've talked about it out of the boat, but it's the same, it's the same way at the bridge, and that was not what we wanted. Um, it's the same way at the bridge. The bait's gonna sit on the upcurrent side of the bridge. So the tide's coming from, say, Tampa towards Egmont right now. So we're fishing on the Tampa side of the bridge, and all the bait is on this side. And 99% of the time, that's where you're gonna find the bait is on the upcurrent side. Let's see. There are some greenbacks. Ooh. Definitely some greenbacks mixed in down there. I had one flip off a minute ago. We want them big threads, man. Let's see what we got. They're not big, but they're thread fins. So that will that will work. I'd rather have the bigger ones, but they all smell the same. I think they do. Do big, big thread fins smell like small thread fins? Oh. And we're not going to sit here and do this one at a time, guys. We're going to throw the net in a minute. Like I said, I'm just kind of trying to figure out where I want to throw the net, what kind of bait's down there. And hopefully, uh, hopefully we can make it pretty quick and get back to the house. Definitely want some of them bigger thread fins up. Lost him. So this is definitely an effective way to get bait. But now, the guy over there just threw his net. I didn't see what he caught. But now let's, uh, like I said, because this is what we're looking for. These are a little small. They're better than nothing. Thread fin herrings. And the reason they call them thread fins, the difference is, I should have showed you on that green bag. That's what makes him a thread, settle down buddy. That's what makes him a thread fin herring right there. See the thread on his back, I broke part of it off. But, and like I said, these are, these are better to me, these are better dead baits than, uh, than green bags, your regular cultured, so. All right, dude, let's do it. Let's throw one time. And like I said, this is where, this is where it's very important to make sure you're between the, between the poles, because this tide is ripping out right now. So when I throw this net, it's going to go straight back under the bridge. And if I'm obviously in front of one of those poles, we're going to lose a net. There's a manatee. Look at him, Jake. Look at the manatee. See how he just popped up in that school of bait? See that? He just popped up in that school of bait. I mean, I'm not saying manatees eat meat, but we talked about this before in one of our other videos. We're getting close to sunset. There is a certain time when manatees, I don't know, you better watch them. So what we're throwing, <laughs> what we're throwing is the 10 foot 3 8 Talon cast net from Tampa Bay Fishing Channel. And uh, you can go online and order these from these guys, from, uh, from Todd, Tampa Bay Fishing Channel. These have been really, really, really good nets. They're, uh, they're kind of getting out there a little bit. People are realizing that they're, they're good nets, especially especially for the money. Nets, some nets are, have gotten crazy. These nets right here are very reasonable. Oh, let's see. So I got a pole there, and I got a pole here. Tide's going this way. So can you see that bait there? Let's see. We're going to... I don't want to come down this other side. 
this current. Golly, dude. That tide is ripping. Gonna have to switch Jake in a minute. He's got to put that camera down. Let's see if we got anything that we want to do. And we did. Let's see if it's thread fins or what it is. It's not a ton, because like I said, that tide's ripping. I can't, I can't let the net sink as well out here as I can off the boat, obviously. But uh, that's definitely what we're looking for, and we're gonna catch fish on them tomorrow. And I'm gonna knock the basket over. throwing the net anyways, Jake. Why aren't you throwing the net? Or at least if I throw the net, you could pull it in. Kill we'll him, think dude. about it next time. Huh? We'll think about it next time. Oh, you just weren't prepared today? All right, so I'm gonna prep my cooler real quick. <laughs> so I made a mistake the other night, guys. I came out here, had this idea that I was gonna do this, keep my bait fresh all night. So I filled the cooler with bait. And then I went to the gas station and I bought three bags of ice. I put the three bags of ice in the cooler on top of the bait. And when I woke up in the morning for my trip, me and Jake walked outside and both looked at each other at the same time. We were like, smell something? I'm like, yeah, I smell something. Don't know what it is. So we throw the cooler on the boat, get out to the spot. Well, it was us. It was the cooler. The, the ice was perfect on top. It was just my, it was bad, my bad, bad on my part. Um, so the ice was perfect on top. The ice didn't melt, so it wasn't the cooler. I didn't put any ice down below. So everything below that top layer laid in there and rotted overnight. And we still had a good trip, but there's a difference between dead bait and rotten bait. You agree, Jake? Oh, I definitely agree. <laughs> First off, the difference is rotten bait, you have to sit there and smell it all day. But fresh dead bait is what you're looking for. You don't want rotten bait. When I first uh, when I first started using a lot of dead bait, I would just take a five gallon bucket and fill it up in the mornings, and I'm like, okay, there's my dead bait. Until I realized that a lot of, I think a lot of species, uh, tarpon, grouper, snook, are really turned off by a rotten bait. We, we kind of got in a spot where we could see some of the fish and we watched them and they seem really turned off by a rotten bait. Love dead baits, but don't want rotten baits. So, these are perfect. I wish they were a little bigger, but we're not gonna, we're not gonna be picking so. Oh, let's see. I guess we'll do it again. Why aren't you throwing the net, Jake? He acts like I can't run the camera. That gets him out of doing a lot of things. I think. I mean, it's smart on his part, but... So anyways, guys, that's how we catch bait off the Skyway. And like I said, if I was looking for... If I was targeting greenbacks, I would probably bounce up and down the bridge and use the sabiki until I started seeing mostly greenbacks. Or if I was looking for sardines, same thing. Uh, but right now we're looking for thread fins. They're here. So we're gonna fill the cooler up with them. And um, we're gonna go fish tomorrow. Hopefully they don't rot overnight. And 
as long as they don't we're gonna have a good trip tomorrow so until we do this again until next time i appreciate you guys watching god bless everybody and we'll see you on the bridge or the water